Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 66 of Apron Wear Podcast with Cheer Boys, Carlos Araspes. Carlos, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm never going to get used to that. I, it was 60 episodes and I laughed every time and that's you know fair. what? He made it easy for me. I didn't have yeah, to come up with my fair. own saying. I just take what Walton did. So thanks, Walt, where, <laughs> wherever wherever you are. The parts unknown. <laughs> um, so I guess as usual, in case you haven't noticed what the episode's about, um, we are going to be speaking on the, I guess, sudden demise of the ROH roster. I, I don't even know. I, I'm not quite sure exactly what's being done outside yeah. of they're letting guys go out of their contract. So yeah, they're not renewing like many and whatever they're renewing. It's like, oh, well, your contract's up like right before. Was it final battles? Their last pay-per-view, right? Or, uh, yeah, I, that's the one in December. I think I, I would love to say I follow ROH, but I don't. Yeah, I think Final Battle's their next one. I think that's a Philly, too. Um, and then I think whatever the next pay-per-view would be, like their big one in, in um, April, that that's when they re, like, 2.0, NXT 2.0. Yeah, yeah, that's... Without Chucky. <laughs> it's worked out so well for NXT. I, I don't know. I, I won't even get into that part of it. But yeah, um, <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> So this kind of, I mean, it really came out of nowhere because I, I, I've i seen so long that, they, that recently anyway, that everybody's like independent wrestling's thriving. Um, see AEW, you know, put a spotlight on a secondary, but now you have the other ones that their attendance is up and stuff like that. Wrestling mm-hmm. is on the rise. Um, and then ROH, which I guess would be considered fourth to a common person to, to somebody um, who, who doesn't really pay that much attention to wrestling ROH would probably come forth. I, I would say so. And, and this is not to besmirch anyone who like loves ROH and like thinks they should be one or anything. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> it's, it's more, it's harder to find ROH on regular TV. Like I've yeah. randomly found it on a Sunday at like 10 30 at night. Like after a pay per view, like I was on like regular antenna TV because I didn't have cable. I was like, "Oh, is this ROH?" Um, and I think Pluto TV might have it, which is like a free TV yeah. service. They have like a whole wrestling channel, which is pretty. It's actually a decent service if you guys. If, also, if you want to sponsor us, oh, we're down. <laughs> uh, I'll talk about Pluto TV and actual Japanese Power Rangers all day. That's a different podcast. That's not this one. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's like it's harder to find them like on regular TV. Like AEW, right. massive. You know, now it's on TNT. Going to be on TBS and TNT. You know, every week. Uh, WWE is on actually regular TV on Fox. Gets promoted as we mentioned before on like NFL Sunday on Fox and things like that. It's on FS1 when it's not. You know, it's like being delayed for like the World Series or anything like that. Yeah, like, it's easy to find. Yeah. AW, AEW, and then Impact is owned by Access. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that, yeah, you, you figured out the third one. I, not like it was hard, but oh, in all yeah. honesty, for most people, if you don't say Impact, if you say it's the old TNA, they're like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. I, I mean, to be honest with you, ROH is right there with me on New Japan because I know a lot of people that used to say, yeah, I used to put on this channel late at night and it was these these Japanese wrestlers. <laughs> you know? yeah. There'd be a couple Americans. I remember I seen Davey, um, Davey Boy Smith's son on there you know british bulldog song i seen on there and so like i've had people probably talk to me more about new japan who were not wrestling fans than roh but um again i i think that's a toss-up when it comes to people who don't really follow wrestling yeah. uh, that's that's where i'm and, and I, i'd like to say too on top of that like we came from like we grew up in the 90s watching wrestling so and we're from philly so we were well aware of ecw's rise and that was on like at least for us, but that was on Channel 48, right? Yeah, Channel 48, and that was on Saturdays. During, like, normal time, like, 7, 8 o'clock. But so many people across the country knew about ECW. And, I mean, yeah. they were, you know, they were they showed up on WWE a couple times, or WWF at the time. But 
I felt like because that was such a movement and such a like a revolution, they mm-hmm. got more exposure than let's say now. I think now I think nowadays it's it's harder for an independent corporation to get an exposure without being on TV, like prime time, like cable television or even normal television, like something that you can pop on anytime. Like right now, as we're recording, like Dynamite's on <laughs> right. live, like. Yeah, yeah. I, I I will say for the people watching this on the video, um, because I realized last episode we talked about stuff from the video, and not everybody's technically watching the video. Um, I'm pretty sure one of my two light bulbs went out, so the lighting in here is not as good as normal. And there's a light <laughs> flicker to my face. It's AEW Dynamite. We're recording <laughs> yeah. Wednesday night. Um, not sure when the episode will actually be out, but yeah. So that that's what this weird light is coming on yeah, the, the side of my face yeah i was, I was like watching it like usually my picture is a lot clearer i'm pretty sure when the light bulbs went out okay i won't focus on that too much i had to just get that across because it looked weird to me um but yeah so uh i want to dig right in to this before we start talking about the wrestlers and stuff i mean it it, it sucks for them i, I mean yeah. i I feel bad for the wrestlers, uh, especially because you made it through COVID. <laughs> and yeah, then, I mean they were and, getting paid. They got paid. Yeah, they got taken made, care of, which is nice. And, and I guess maybe in a way it's good that it happened this way than the other way around, um, because Tony Khan could only bring in so many people <laughs> during COVID. That's true. That's true. Eventually, the only unfortunate thing is I, I don't. I mean, there's a lot you can make assumptions of, and we'll, we'll you know we'll get into the nitty gritty of it. But it's it's they have been doing so many things leading up to before this announcement, like so many things getting closer and closer to like where we're at now. I don't know if the I don't, and it seems like rumor is like the roster. Most of the roster didn't even know, like right. even big wigs. Like apparently, some champions didn't know until that tweet went out, and then like one of their boys hit them up, and they were like, "Wait, what? You you they're closing?" They're like, "What do you mean they're closing?" And they looked at their phones, and that's when it clicked. <laughs> so, I i mean, you can make a lot of assumptions on what's going on. It could be Sinclair Broadcasting. Like I said, right before we filmed, I saw something earlier. I mean, obviously, huge grain of salt. But there's rumors that, like, Sinclair Broadcasting, the parent company, I'm reading here from, like, a thing, uh, of Ring of Honor issued a press release with their third quarter financial results for 2021. And they have over $12.5 million worth of debt. Now, I mean, literally, they just introduced a women's title. They just had a women's tournament. Um, they, you know, have been featuring, like, women's tag teams. Um, and with this happening, I mean, everyone's allowed to do whatever they want now. Obviously, the Briscoes, I mentioned before filming, they just won the GCW World Tag Team titles. Uh, Grissom, Jonathan Grissom just showed up on GCW. Bandito, their world champion, is going to show up there. Um, I just read something that at their final pay-per-view, the Briscoes are defending the GCW world titles, the tag titles on okay. an ROH pay-per-view. Right. So, and I don't know if you read, sorry, I just want to fix my chair. Um, I don't know if you read this, uh, Mike, but what I, uh, what I saw last was that like the 2.0 of ROH, <laughs> like to just make fun of it just because we have NXT 2.0. Is going to be more like a PWG, a GCW, where they can get bigger names to come in, you know, wrestle these matches. But right. it's like, no, not very few people are going to have like contracts. Yeah. It is going to be like this floating independent thing now. And it, see, I don't want to knock fans of, of Ring of Honor, and I'm going to um, We're gonna go, go on my soapbox here a little bit of, I could never get into Ring of Honor um, purely for the reason that I just didn't like how their shows were done. I didn't like the fact that you needed a streaming service for the most part to pay to watch them. I didn't like the fact that if I would go to a show for ROH that I felt like like five different matches were going to be shown up on five different record. Like, you know, like it. It gotcha, seemed gotcha. thrown together when you used to go to the tapings. And um, I never actually watched the shows. For all I know, it was two tapings and one or whatever. I know they, they would tape a lot and then not, you know. Yeah. Um, 
and and I get that from a financial standpoint and stuff like that, but like I just I couldn't get into them for that reason. I, I mean, I I started watching NWA when they revived that on uh, on YouTube up until the whole Jim Cornette, um, Trevor Murdoch, uh, yeah, that that whole controversy. But it, it was exciting to watch. And and, and Ricky Starks is the first time I seen Ricky Starks, and yeah. and and um, I, I love Aaron Stevens, and, and him so him being on there was great. And uh, I just. Eddie Kingston, you know, they, they had guys on there that made me want to watch. And again, I, this is not a knock on ROH because they have talent. Um, sure. I don't know that they have that talent, if that makes sense. I, I, I think when, when I look down up and down their roster, again, no knock on the roster because I love Jay Lethal. Um, yeah, jo- jo- Jonathan Gresham, I've never seen, but I know that he was on the rise there recently. Um, yeah, he's I mean, a I champion for a while. Yeah, I love I love Dutch because he is one half of my favorite tag team of all time. Um, team tremendous for those of you out there who don't know who I'm talking about. Um, it, but you just go up and down the roster, and and honestly, outside of EC3, who I just told you before the episode, I thought he was just making appearances there. Didn't even know he was signed with them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought he was a little bit of trying to do a little almost kind of like Matt Cordona, you know, yeah, up until he signed with impact. I thought he was just letting his, you know, so I was a little surprised Testing to see he was on there. Um, I know a lot of people talk highly of, uh, I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation of his name. Uh, Dan, Dan Housen. Dan Housen. Da- I Don, love Dan Housen. Dan Housen is awesome. Um, no, and 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 he he seems it. I've never seen him wrestle. Don't know. I mean, ever since this has all happened, I see he's all over MJF's Twitter, which I think is yeah. hilarious. Um, yeah. Don't, unfortunately, he just broke his leg. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like horrible situation is that, right? <laughs> yeah. So Danhausen literally just showed up on Jericho's cruise. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. That that photo. <laughs> if you like hate people like orange cassidy like uh, a buddy of mine got mark 76 what up mark he like hates orange cassidy i'm sure he's gonna hate dan Housen. and you see like literally like it's like two of the pound for pound greatest wrestlers of all time straight up will osprey <laughs> and chris jericho in the middle of a boat next to dan Housen <laughs> and orange cassidy it's like it, it there's somebody like freak it out and i'm pretty sure it's mark and i'm pretty sure he's like just angry at the world <laughs> like and it's mostly arch cassidy because he doesn't know who dan Housen is but once he yeah. knew who dan Housen was he'd be like you know what no this is too much <laughs> but yeah i mean we I, there's there's a lot of local guys too i mean that came yeah, up through roh and, i mean and that's like again this is not a knock on them i've seen a lot of these guys wrestle you got cheeseburger uh yeah. pj black Great. Uh, Silas Young, who I love, I feel like he would be Dude, perfect. Really? Um, he would be a perfect AEW QT Marshall type to take the yeah. fall. I, I mean, I know every time I've watched him, I feel like he's one of those guys that'd be a great worker. Mm-hmm. And I would like, and, a, I would like to see him with like uh, FTR. Yeah, they, they wrestle that old style almost. You know I mean, yeah, like that late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess technically the way that. Um, the chairman is the pinnacles fall guy. Like, you know, yeah, he could yeah, be, yeah. he could be the fall guy for the team kind yeah. of thing. Um, Matt what Taven. Brody King. Yeah. Oh, uh, Matt Taven. Yeah. That's another one, man. That dude's super talented, but like Kenny King, hey. like I'm going off of names that I've seen wrestle plenty of times. Mike Bennett. I've seen the, I've seen them mm-hmm. all wrestle and they're talented, but they're not no knock on any of these guys. And I really don't want anybody to be angry at me for this. I don't know that any of them are must see to the point that you're like, I need to go watch. I mean, they had one of one of the, the I couldn't watch them because of their champion was so long was the, that was a PCO. Yeah. No knock on him, but he looks like an old guy wrestling. He looks I way mean, older than everybody else. I know he is. Yeah, I, I know. I was gonna is. say he actually is. But like, but like, it's not like like he looks great for his age. Like, I, I feel like it's like if NWA right now were to put Ric Flair as their champion and let him be champion for three years, and just like 
Yeah, and like how can nobody beat him? It's like the dude looks old. Like, well, he, you I, know what? The the strange thing too with PCO, and I found it weird. Is like, do you remember him wrestling as a kid? No. In WWE. No. Like I I I kind of like I I remember when watching ROH and he was champion. I was like, and hearing about him in the Indies, I'm like, this dude. Like I know everyone said he's like from the past. But, like he looks so familiar to me. And then like he's like. He teamed up with the Mountie for the longest time. <laughs> like that's a, that's to tell you, like this that's how old school he yeah. is. Like he was like one of these characters, like Repo Man and stuff like that. Which I just found out Repo Man was freaking part of Doom. Blew my <laughs> mind because I literally just caught up with pretty much all of Dark Side of the Ring. I literally <laughs> have been it since last week. And so like he's like one of these wrestlers from like back in WWF days where like you had to have some kind of crazy gimmick like the Repo Man or uh, was the 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 goon right he, he he had hockey gear and stuff like that yeah and he revitalizes his career at like fifty and is doing crazy shit in and out of the ring so it's like you see you hear him you're like oh dude this dude's old you know no offense whatever and it's like that that same argument and then you watch the match you're like well shit hold on <laughs> he can actually go and it's just weird you know like it's just yeah. strange to be yeah. like and, wow and this dude can go as i said i don't i don't know and maybe it's because and recently we actually talked about possibly doing an episode on the mlw uh, which yeah. I'm, I'm sure we'll probably get around to eventually but yeah, it was we'll fresh off of that um alexander hammerstone and jacob fatu uh title you know for title yeah, unific- yeah title for yeah. title yeah so um but like compare the two I mean, compared to, we did not mention MLW, even in our top five of a common person. Now, Jacob Fatu has the name power. Mm -hmm. You might not know who he is, but you know the family lineage. So when you see him, he reminds you a lot of Umaga. You know what I mean? Like he has Mm -hmm. that build. He looks it. He looks dangerous. And then Alexander Hammerstein looks like everything that WWE has ever wanted in a champion. Yeah. They have that. If you don't know who they are, they're going to make sure you know who they are. Yeah. Now, put that, and again, no knock on ROH, but against the PCO, I don't even know, cheeseburger main event. And you see those guys standing in the ring, and you're like, who's this old guy, and why is this guy's name Cheeseburger? And I know he's he, now he goes by CB or whatever, and I know. World famous whole, CB. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah um, but, like, outside of the Briscoes, none of them stand out as um, must-see. There are a lot of good workers, I guess. I guess that's where I'm, I'm kind of – and I know Ring of Honor is supposed to be about wrestling and the honor of wrestling yeah. and wrestling the right way, and that's great. But it doesn't help put um, I, you know people what I who say. don't know the – that don't know the brand it don't help put eyes on the brand if that makes sense yeah and i got you and, and a difficult thing you know with, with skirting around what we you know we were talking about pre-show you know there's a lot of fans who are blaming aew yes. you know for yeah, I, I didn't want to get to it first i actually yeah. almost did and then i jumped yeah. away from it so i'm yeah, happy yeah. you're leading into it yeah we'll, we'll <laughs> lead into it because i think there's there's a lot of people who and and to mention again mark uh a friend of mine uh because he's he's an older guy, you know, like he he is like in his mid forties. This is the dude who like would go if you turn on the network right and watch ECW episodes, you could find him. He just has hair now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has he had hair back then. He doesn't that anymore. He has a giant beard. So like you would see him in the background. He knew he does. He grew up in Philly. He's this this guy trained yeah. to be a wrestler, failed. It didn't work out for him. <laughs> he makes jokes about it, but like. And watching like the trajectory, right? So you see, ROH was a thing, you know, obviously built on the backs of uh, Brian Danielson, Christopher Daniels, Kazarian, you know, like all these people. And they had this working relationship that they built with, you know, TNA and at the time. So they could, those wrestlers can get more, you know, mainstream appeal, you know, CM Punk's in the flock with Raven over an impact <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, and like their history gets like strange because then like there's a mass exodus, right? A bunch of ROH people go, either go to Impact and stay at Impact because of all the Rob Feinstein stuff. And if you don't know who that is, that's crazy. That's nuts. I actually know someone who he used to date, and he dated him because he looked like a little boy. So 
leave it to what he is. He's persona non grata <laughs> in Philly wrestling, by the way. <laughs> Gets kicked out of SmackDown every time they're here. Um, <laughs> but like, there's a mass exodus at this time, right? They have a controversy in ROH, and th- there's like these little microcosms of like weird shit that happens to ROH, and they get setbacks, and then they build themselves back up. So yeah. it keeps happening. It's like a recurring cycle for good or bad, right? And and we we're in this cycle now where they're rebuilding from the ashes. And, and like I said, I'm not, you know, whatever happened, happened. And from a wrestling standpoint, my only negative thing to say about the EVPs of AEW going over and making AEW is they never kind of recognized that ROH is kind of the thing that got them for the most part in America over. Right. Um, they always talk about PWG, which is not a problem. You know, like the Bucks like made their name in PWG mm. and that's like super, super indie stuff. And But like no mention of ROH who financed all in, you know, things like that. It's it, That's that's a little difficult thing. I mean, I can overlook it. I don't work for either company. Obviously, right. Contact me. Uh, <laughs> I am a shill. I will do it. <laughs> uh and, you know, and, and New Japan as well. And it, the, the funny thing is when AEW's created, right, if you're watching wrestling history, they pissed off so many people. And, I mean, if you're an AEW stan and you're disagreeing with me right now, seriously, do your research. They pissed off New Japan Pro Wrestling to the point where, yeah. what was it, Omega went to do his first tour back in Japan with DDT Pro, a company he, he like made his name for himself there. And randomly has visa issues for the first time ever in like over 15 years first time he has ever has issues with visa going to japan i was like mm, that seems weird and he's even suspected it without naming names he's like mm, i think someone in New japan is not really happy with what happened and listen it's business and yeah. now look at them right new japan's working with yeah. AEW, they built that bridge back. I, that is the most shocking thing ever. If anything, I would assume ROH would be the company to do it first, not a uh, not New Japan. Part of me, right. just because of like the history of New Japan has with American wrestling, like just constantly getting screwed over, like WCW, <laughs> TNA, TNA not using Okada in, in like the worst light ever, and they're like, you know what, never again. And now look at them. New Japan has freaking. Um, how, what's that? Mamoru Suzuki yeah, is Suzuki. over. <laughs> he's wrestling yeah. like two matches for Impact before he's back in uh, yeah, Japan. Yeah. And he did a tour in AEW and he just wrestled Brian Danielson for the first time in like 12 years uh, or however long since their ROH match. It's like they were willing to open the doors. And to me as a fan, ROH was like always seemed too proud. Again, I yeah. don't know anyone on the roster. I mean, yeah. I talked to a few people on the roster because they're local. I've seen them at local shows. And again, the door's always open if you guys want to do an interview and speak about your time of ROH. So it could be an open floor for yeah. even work. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, like they, they these things, these things keep happening. This recurrent cycle of like shit hits the fan for ROH. It's like everything almost burns down, and then they rebuild themselves back up because they they are a great place for talent. I mean, they are hysteric, like historic, hysterically, historically known. For building up these amazing wrestlers. If you look at their alumni page, it's ridiculous. Like, I literally have it up right now. And, like, just the names you look at initially, like, AJ Styles, Alex Shelley, (laughs) BJ Whitmer, Brian Danielson, Christopher Daniels, CM Punk, uh, Coca Banna, Cody Rhodes, you know, the Young Bucks, Age, you know, like all these people, Kevin Steen, Jeff Cobb, Frankie Kazarian, you know. Uh, Damian Priest now, you know, Punishment Martinez back in the day, Tyler Black, Samoa Joe, like, these are the names that are here now, currently in wrestling, that we revere, and it's because of their time in ROH. Yeah. So, this recurring cycle now has begun, right? It began again with AEW being created. They have to reformat what their shows are, what their roster is, you know, what they want to be in the future because right. they are a cornerstone, a cornerstone of the wrestling industry since the fall of ECW. Yeah. Like it's like when ECW falls, CZW just takes all the hardcore shit and <laughs> runs with it. And they get CZW and DCW. And then on the other end, you get ROH and you get all the pure wrestling stuff that a lot of people always forget about ECW had. 
you know, you get like the Malenko matches, the Guerrero matches, you get the, you know, like Jerry Lynn and RVD stuff. You get that in ROH. Yeah. So there's a split in Philly and the Northeast area. And these two companies, these three companies get made. And now they started rebuilding stuff. They had a women's title. They had a like retool the whole vi- women's division. They just crowned a new women's champion. And now this is happening. You know, that's crazy. Um, and then you have all these yeah. people like just looking at their roster, their current roster, what they have now. And I've seen something I've, I've talked to you before. Like we have Mecca, Brian Johnson who's from Philly. Yeah. He started cutting his teeth now just recently with the pure um, championship. Like he was trying to, he was chasing that. Great promos, great yeah. character, lives the pro- like lives he, the gimmick out offline. He, he follows us on Twitter, so yeah, I mean, thank he God. must That's clearly awesome. be awesome. Oh yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> but like he's starting to cut his teeth, right? And and that yeah. this is like someone that always can put their their money into. You have Brody King, who has cut his teeth in like independent wrestling and um, European wrestling, and now we're gonna lose him. You know, he had a stable. You know, obviously he was in another stable with a. The previous booker of ROH, <laughs> who we will not name, yeah. <laughs> he was a villain in real life, not just a gimmick. Uh, but yeah, 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 EC3, who like, you know, quote unquote, free his narrative. And now, like, yeah. what's happening with that? The right. Briscoes, one of the most, uh, funny enough, I mean, one of the most decorated tag teams yeah. in independent wrestling. I saw them when they were on CZW and they were like skinny kids. Now they're like, tatted up crazy like awesome wrestlers jenny rose who uh we both know yes, mutual yes other laws <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> so like she's like building herself up jay lethal literally one of the best wrestlers ever yeah like it, it's 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 sad because you can see they were building stuff up right you know and, and now what what is it what was it going to yeah. be in april when it restarts like are these people going to have those jobs can they come back are these titles going to be relevant you know and, and that's that's what i said i, I don't want to make it sound like that the roster was not talented i was just yeah saying from from a um from a casual wrestling fan standpoint where are you going to put your eyes on and they like said i thought mlw i thought getting on vice tv with alexander hammerstone and yeah. and um jacob fatu and they have um YouTube Tom, you Tom, Tom Lawler. Oh, yeah. Tom Lawler is, is you know, it was a filthy Tom Lawler or whatever, yeah. and he comes out in these really short jorts and wrestles, and, you know, and you got the UFC. But that's what I said. Like, you got those names. And, and, it, and hell, again, you, to the casual, yeah. Jay Lethal is the guy who impersonated Ric Flair. I mean, yeah. to a casual, they know that video. Yeah. They know that yeah. is Jay Lethal. You see they that don't... meme, or you seen yeah. Black Machismo, you yeah. know, him, him pretending to uh, be Macho Man. And and and... That, it, but that's just where, I guess, it, we talked about AEW, I, I guess, being the reason why ROH shut down. And, and you have to go back further. You have yeah. to go back to NXT, because NXT was put <laughs> on wwe's radar they made it to yeah. compete with the likes of roh they wanted it to be yeah. an indie feel and then they went and they grabbed all of those guys yeah <laughs> like and, they, and, they legit grabbed them all they grabbed yeah. everybody who was there outside of the couple holdouts that you have that you had that hangman and omega and the young bucks and they were all guys mm-hmm. that we were waiting when are they going to go to nxt it wasn't yeah. will they and we were thinking when will they yeah Samoa joe could have easily Samoa joe could have easily went back to roh and been the yeah. top guy but he yeah. decided to go nxt which was a good idea because you have Triple H who's like <laughs> a Triple H who's like almost weirdly enough been detrimental to the, the business and like put himself over so many times. And then it comes to NXT. He's like, all right, well, now it's time to give it back. And he does in spades. And yeah. he did. And now it's 2.0, you yeah. know, and yeah, now but- they're building people from the start. I mean, in, in reality, what happened? And I guess if you want to look at it from this way, AW killed NXT. And I feel like NXT started the slow death of ROH, which then yeah. AEW slit the throat. I don't know. <laughs> like they were bleeding out and R- and AEW yeah, said, it- all right, 
we're going to take away that NXT pipeline because that's really what happened. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what WWE says. WWE was not the hip indie show for NXT was not the hip indie show anymore. AEW was. AEW was doing it on a bigger scale than WWE ever thought NXT could be on. And yeah. NXT could be on the same scale that AEW is right now. They Absolutely. could have went could to be. these. They could have went to to Temple's Stadium. They they could have went to these secondary stadiums in all these markets and mm-hmm. sold out. They just could have. And they, they, they could have, have left been a their guys there. Third brand. Yeah, and they could have left their guys there, and people would have loved them for it. And mm-hmm. the thing is, AEW said, "Look, this is what you should have been. These weren't there. We're going to do it." The yeah. problem is now you have two different companies holding on to these guys, and now you're slowly seeing them leave WWE because they don't yeah. have a space for them no more. I mean, that's why everybody's counting down. Uh, it was the latest news: Kyle O'Reilly is contract up in a month. Um, a Ke- month Kevin yeah. Owens has been teasing it for a while now that he might be going in January. Uh, yeah, that, I think pro- Gargano is done yeah. in December. That's so, true, like, yeah. you have all these guys; they're going to be perfect in AEW. Mm-hmm. But they'd also be perfect in Impact because you could jump from Impact to AW to New Japan. Yeah. And now they have that freedom where when you used to go to some, I don't even want to say it like this, some bingo hall, you'd go to, to some armory, I guess is yeah. the best way to say it. Uh, you go to some armory to watch some small level and you get some guy showing up from ROH and you think it's the most amazing thing in the world that he yeah. showed up to some now we're watching it on TV. You know, yeah. this is, this is what's been happening for years at indie shows where you'd be like, Oh my God, how, how'd they get EC3 to show up? It's, you know, PPRW, the Philadelphia local wrestling company. Yeah. And, and yeah. here's the other thing too. And, and I see like this common factor, I feel like the common factor for uh, for a company succeeding against WWE and even just even trying to compete in any way, shape or form is a working relationship with other companies. Right. Yeah. So. Like AEW is definitely the second biggest company. Right. And it's, it's yeah. I, I would love to say they're the first, but they're the first in the hearts and minds of so many of <laughs> us, but not literally the, the first yeah. money wise. Right. So you get WWE, who is his own big entity in its own. So what does AEW do? They try to create their own thing. It does really well for the first year and a half. And then this forbidden door finally opens. And I know it's a tired thing. Like, oh, Tony Khan's a forbidden door and all this stuff. But look at it, man. I mean, what ROH's biggest years after Punk, uh, Danielson, Tyler Black, Steen, El Genetico, and Samoa Joe leaving, right? And all these like Impact and WWE future people leaving is when they start all right we're working with the bucks oh they're working in japan hey you guys can you talk to like gato over there who's their head booker this works something now oh okay so we'll send bobby fish and kyle o'reilly oh they just won the iwgp junior heavyweight titles over there oh they're gonna wrestle at wrestle kingdom oh they're gonna hold the roh titles oh the roh title is gonna be defended at wrestle kingdom like if if you're super hardcore, like many of us are, especially in that era where like Omega is like leader of the Bullet Club and things like that, you're watching a lot of New Japan because you hear it's like hard to not listen yeah. to people like the Bullet Club at that time is the NWO. That's why they did the suck it. That's why they did the two sweet, yeah. all that stuff. Like because they were yeah. almost mimicking like the NWO. It's like a joke. It's like an insider joke and stuff, but. Nah. They were that big. They're still the most. It's the highly set, like highest selling shirt in wrestling history. That's not WWE, right? So, if even if you're kind of casual, you can't escape this, right? You can't escape them. You're seeing it at Hot Topic. You're seeing their shirts right. at Hot Topic. You're like, who the hell? Are, who are these guys? Who are the Bullet Club? And then, oh, oh wait, hold on. Who are these guys? Who's Red Dragon? Because this is what happened to me. I was like, oh, well, who are who's these guys? Oh, this Bobby Fish guy is really good. Oh, this Kyle Riley guy's really good. Who's the Adam Cole kid? Yo, I oh, you know what? I actually think I heard of him. Let me look him up on YouTube. And you start going back <laughs> and back. Yeah. But ROH doesn't have that YouTube library where it's accessible. Yeah. I mean, partly you could blame their parent company, Sinclair Broadcasting, right? Yeah. They made it kind of difficult for them to be able to see stuff. Did you know this, Mike? I bet you didn't. You can watch all their episodes free on Fight TV. 
of their weekly yeah. show. Yeah, I didn't see? Know that. yeah. It, you don't need to pay for it. You can literally just like subscribe to the page and watch every one of their live episodes that they or like whenever they're televised episodes and catch up. They do a horrible job at communicating that to like a, a, a general audience. It's so easy to find MLW. Impact shows highlights all the time. WWE shows highlights all the time. Yeah. Other top moments. AEW does like a top five every Friday. And and that that's that's where I think like you're saying, because even New Japan, I, I mean they, they had their shows and stuff like that, but you're talking about they had a working relationship with each other and both mm-hmm. of them you need to subscribe to their service to mm-hmm. see. So it's like one of those things. I knew all that stuff happened, but outside of YouTube clips that I had to go searching for myself or um just reading results. They said it's a lot different on that than watching on TNT Suzuki show yeah. up um, yeah. and then having him show up on impact like the next night and having Christian defending the TNA t- or the, the impact title. Yeah. And then also wrestling. Like it's, I guess because of, um, because of TNT and, and it's not just TNT because impact has their own, you know, wherever channel they're on now. Yeah. Um, but like, MLW and NWA both have YouTube show. I'm assuming NWA still does. I don't honestly. I stopped watching. Kind of. I once it. think I will. I think I said it's a similar situation. I think they moved, but they communicated. They moved all their stuff to fight. I think you can watch okay. their episodes of Power on Fight, right? And then obviously, like their pay per views are, are exclusive to Fight TV. Okay. Well, when, when 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 it when it just started back up, and I was like, "Ooh, I can watch something from episode one." You know, this is cool. And free. Yeah. And, and that's what it, it, and MLW, the same thing. The fact that I can go and watch all their previous shows on YouTube is great because I can just go back and watch them. And when you're not AEW, when you're not WWE, who both have that accessibility to you to go back and watch previous episodes. Yeah. Um, I mean, you need technically you need a as long as you have cable that has TNT you know yeah you can go back you have and, the and, tnt website and, it's and, and i mean th- there's rumors of of a streaming service for yeah. aw or them teaming up with like what would be quote unquote turner's team you know hbo but, but HBO i'd be Max. i'd be willing to bet that you'd still get some of their content yeah um, oh yeah for free even without that and i think that's where roh lost me at times because i'm like I can't I mean, watch it, none it, of your stuff free. Like, I mean, at least from the way they're making it sound, I can't watch your stuff free or easy. Their, their uh, YouTube channel is not bad. It's adapted. It, it def- they definitely adapt it and like would have highlights and stuff. And New Japan does a pretty good job of like, um, what's their uh, New Japan Strong? Right, is their American brand? Mm. Funny enough, Tom Lawler is their champion, uh, who I think is going to be doing that full time now. I think he's leaving MLW, um, but. You, you have that every Monday morning on New Japan's uh, YouTube page, their English YouTube page. You can see highlights, like 10 minute highlights of what happened on New Japan Strong the previous right. Saturday. You know, like you can find highlights and then if you can do the work and just find the episode. Yeah, it's, it's readily available for a lot of stuff. Now, the stuff that you've seen in Japan, you need a subscription service for. And it's not. I won't bemoan that because I feel like that's not the worst idea because yeah. they're trying, you know, they're trying to make it easier. Obviously, the whole app is in Japanese and they're fixing the English stuff like every year it gets a little better to use their like, right. Yeah, you know, they have an English tab that you can hit and stuff like that. But it's it, I mean, it's hit or miss, right? Like ROH having a streaming service, not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, there's other mm-hmm. benefits that come with it with Honor Club, you know, uh, discounted price on tickets, I believe. You get, like, first-line stuff, like, Honor Club people, like, for the pay-per-view in but, Philly. But, but, again, you have to be a fan of it. And yeah. if I want to become a fan of it, I'm not going to dish out the money like I'm already a fan of it. And I guess that's that's what, like, New Japan, and <laughs> I'm not going to lie and say I actually paid for it. Walton did twice. But for us to watch, I want to say it was Omega, Okada, 2, and 3, um, we got the service so we can watch them live. Yeah. You know, So, like, there was matches or times in that, you know, in New Japan that we were like, we got to see it. 
Yeah. Like I said, I didn't even know half of ROH's roster. <laughs> I knew yeah, I, mean, I knew their champion for a while was a very old guy. I mean, <laughs> I just I mean that's that's the extent of what I knew about them is that their their champion is very old and and that's not a good thing for I, me who actually watches wrestling. <laughs> always fallen. Um, who actually watches wrestling for me to have that perception that, Hey, there's a lot of good workers and they have an 82 year old champion. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's difficult. And, and to have, I, I think they were smart to start rebuilding and it's hard not having an answer, right? Like it's hard <laughs> not having an answer. Like why, why is this company going on this huge hiatus? Like, no one's really getting a straight answer. And then you get this report from Sinclair saying they lost $12.5 million. And like, it sounds like a lot for them. Like they're not yeah. like an ABC, they're not a, you know, NBC or CBS, but they're a big, they're a big, oddly weird national brand. Like we don't have Sinclair stuff here, like in Philly, but we don't have like an affiliate here in Philly, but like they're big. And like, they've been featured on many reports and like they're, this is here and there, but they're extremely right wing. And I'm like, that's how I've actually heard about Sinclair outside of ROH was, oh, hey, uh, you know, they always do these really right wing reports. And they're like the fluff piece on like the 11 o'clock news and whatever station. And it's literally word for word. It's a whole John Oliver thing from like last week tonight. Like he has a whole thing about the Sinclair group. Mm-hmm. And so like non-wrestling, like they're big enough that like John Oliver is talking about them, you know? Right. So for them to lose that kind of money, like, I mean, kudos to them for paying everyone during the pandemic and Mm -hmm. then smartly doing stuff like, all right, well, we'll hold like two events, you know, like the big pay-per-views will have fans. We'll take breaks and then we'll do a bubble and then we'll film a shitload of episodes for like three or four days straight. That'll be our TV time to the next pay-per-view. And then everyone can leave the bubble and do whatever they need to do. Go to be their families and come back in two months, do it again. Yeah. And that's, I mean, they did a lot of smart stuff. It's just, what is it Sinclair going like, like losing all this money? Like what is the cause for them to go on this huge hiatus is the question. I mean, uh, and, I don't and think we'll have answers for like years. Yeah. You know? No. And, and that's, especially if they try to come up with whatever, you know, kind of new ROH that they want to come up with here to this. I think the biggest issue is, I guess, and it's kind of like what Impact went through. Um, they've had to rebrand themselves and restart way more times than anybody should. <laughs> I mean, really, they, you can only rebrand. And I know it, it's not all their fault. You can't no. have You can't have half of your roster poached. Yeah. six seven eight times in like a you know however many th- year span before it finally you just have to i mean what do you do you can't lose all your guys at once and and um i mean i yeah, think the fact speaks highly of like carrie is it carrie silken is there the the like mystic man you know everyone speaks highly of him i mean like no one's ever said to me like i've ever heard a bad word like, I mean, and the only person I ever heard a bad word from was Rob Feinstein, and that's a bag of cats that you do your own research. And I would, I would like to think, and like you said, it's going to be more of like a, um, they don't have guys on their contract, and I think that would be the best way for them to go because of the name value it has. Um, There's a prestige to it. Yeah, and, and I think. Like, I've always kind of had this little bit of a concept where, and this was something I wanted to talk about in a future episode, possibly, but either way, I'll, I'll kind of go into it now, where I thought that AEW, you know, they keep bringing in other titles, right? And I, I always thought they had that, we want it to be a sport, like, real. Wins and losses mean something, right? And they did the mm-hmm. whole Dynamite Diamond Ring, and it seems like every couple months we have a new, you know, poker chip or something for somebody to win something the um, brass ring or I, I always thought it would have been cool to have a champion a champion who's a champion for a year you don't lose it it's like sports 
you're a champion. You win whatever tournament, and now you're the champion kind of thing. Mm. And you have that title for a year, and then you defend it at the next, you know, whatever. You, you go off the best records, whatever it is. And um, I feel like whatever it is, yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, it literally could be like a yearly tournament. I mean, for for those of you that that may follow NASCAR, I mean, I don't really follow it, but I know when they started that whole championship series, it was kind of like you go through the whole year, you know, points matter, wins matter. It's a point system. That last race is like X amount of got X amount of cars in or whatever, and you know, whoever wins it. I guess I guess it's a point system. I don't completely know, so I'm sorry that I'm butchering it for anybody who actually watches NASCAR. But Cars like, go left, and they <laughs> keep going around. But around. then you have your champion, and then they're yeah. the champion until you go through a whole nother year of a build up towards somebody becoming that next champion. And it's the same way with football and basketball and hockey and all the sports. And I just think like something like that would be cool for a place like ROH to be different. Where, yeah. like you said, what happens to the titles? What happens to this? Well, maybe you have guys that show up a lot and, and you, you have a ranking system and and you name your first champion and now they're the champion. You could say he's our champion kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it's hard to guarantee guys their long term for things like that. Um, but I mean, you could say Brian Danielson's our champion, even though he hasn't shown up since he's won it. it he's not defending it. You know what I mean? No, oh, the 2000 yeah. champion, the 2020 champion was this guy, you mm-hmm. know? And then you work on it the next way. And I mean, you know, I always thought you, it was an interesting concept. What it and, sounds like, it, it almost sounds like Bolo in PWG. You know, they have the, uh, I don't know what would the, I always forget what the end result of Bolo is, the Battle of LA. If, uh, if you get like a title shot for the PWG championship or something like that, but hmm. that was like, that's a prestigious like indie tournament. And that's like, there's DVDs, there's highlight reels, there's like official highlight reels and there's unofficial highlight reels of PWG bolas from the past. And like the matchups are ridiculous. Like you, you would have a Kevin Steen versus a Tommy end, you know, before, yeah. you know, if, if you're watching PWG or you're in that area, you know who they are. Right. And they're big, but like if you're just online and you're on the East Coast like us, you're like, yo, who is this Tommy N guy? I've heard of Kevin Steen because of ROH, but who's this Tommy N guy? Yeah. And years later we get Malachi Black. You know, like yeah, they, that sounds similar to what what you're, but that's, what you're requesting. And, and they could do that with the pure championship. Well that's and the I pure even title think, is the perfect like thing for that. Well, part of me even thinks too, let's say, let's say they're going completely nobody under contract. Can't guarantee anybody staying. So now you do something similar to that. Now, obviously, this is all dependent on working your relationships out with everybody else. But what you have is you have a couple AEW guys, a couple New Japan guys, a couple Impact guys, MLW, whatever. And then whoever wins gets a total shot of their choosing or something like that. You know what I mean? You kind of almost have mm-hmm. this set up with them where now you have all these guys coming in. You're seeing matchups on them. You know, and then you have a CM Punk win and say, I want New Japan's title or whatever. I'm just throwing yeah, and, and crap to the wall. And maybe you, you stick to younger guys that aren't getting as much visibility. And it's a way to like launch a Brian somebody. Johnson. Yeah. Like a yeah, Brian it, Johnson. It, or It's a way to launch somebody because now suddenly Brian Johnson showing up on AEW calling out Kenny Omega. And you're like, what? And you're like, well, he just yeah. won the tournament. Look at the guys he beat to get to here. Yeah, kind yeah, of thing. yeah. Or LSG, like who was actually just we were in Philly and he was featured on dark elevation. Like you could have someone like that and, and yeah. build them up and have like a hierarchy of, of, of wrestling companies, yeah. right? Like how you're mentioning, like what well, we have the monster factory locally in Philly, right? So a lot of monster factory people are, that's like a training ground in future of honor, which is down, I believe in Baltimore, which that's going to be interesting to see what becomes a future of honor now. <laughs> uh, but the, yeah, the monster factory and those two are kind of like, where people go to train and then get into the ROH system, you know, okay. get make their way. So why, why like make your way up almost, right? Like how we imagine, we talked about this before, how we imagine AEW, like dark elevation, dark, work your way up to dynamite and rampage. Right. You got to go through elevation and regular dark, make it like that. 
and, and, and kind of put eyes to that, right? Like, oh, hey, so we like let's we keep using Brian Johnson because he's a friend of the show, <laughs> but <laughs> have Mecca, right? But like, well, Mecca's in this pure championship tournament for the ROH pure championship because look at who we beat in, in Monster Factory Wrestling. Here's the highlights. Go into uh, our YouTube page you, and subscribe. You can see those matches on there or subscribe to their YouTube page and see that and then build that up, right? right. Hey, Mecca's showing up because he's the pure, he's the ROH pure championship uh, winner of 2022. Where is he showing up next? Oh, he's on Dark and he's working his way through Dark. Say, like, hey, I'm the best goddamn wrestler here. I want to wrestle Daniel Garcia. I want to wrestle CM Punk, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, hopefully, you know, Adam Cole, like Kenny Omega. I want to wrestle these dudes because I I already proved over there I'm the best. So I'm going to show you guys. Like, if everyone works together, like the Rising Tide yeah. lists all ships, right? That's the saying. Yeah. Like, so you just, all these companies need to work together. No one should be like, hey, you screwed me over. Like, maybe. But we also elevated all of wrestling too at the same time. Yeah. Like it's dangerous you do, damn if you don't. We're not in that industry to be like, hey, that's not right. If someone yeah. did that to you, it's shitty. <laughs> I mean, how how crazy is this that two years ago we'd be saying this is fantasy and there's no way oh, yeah. in hell, but it would be awesome if they could do it. And yet there's been so much playing along with each other's and belts being defended on other channels, and AW basically saying we want to raise wrestling up. We yeah. don't want to shut you down. That, I mean, why couldn't something like that happen? I mean, really, why couldn't it? Yeah, I don't. And, and, and again, we, it comes down to ROH, I think. And and I don't know who's who's mad at who. Is ROH so bitter about not getting their credit that they just they said you you depleted us? Yeah, should have let them stay. You know what I mean? And they're, for all we know, they're so bitter right now and, that they don't and, want and to be anything fair, to do with AEW. And to be fair, to play devil's advocate, they also screw themselves. They they booked these people to the moon. Yeah. And they were like, you know what? Man, we're booked to the moon. Like, what's it? Like, Danielson became, uh, or not Danielson, Chris, Chris Daniels became RH world champion again after Cody was ROH world champion and he was new uh NWA world championship and he was the IWGP US like these companies are like yeah yeah keep going you guys are awesome all this stuff and then like the elite and everyone were like guys should we just make our own company because yeah. <laughs> look how big we are over here we could just propel this to something else and like hey that guy's super has a lot of fucking money let's go to him <laughs> He loves wrestling. We happen to talk to him all the time. Yeah, let's go to the rich guy. Oh, cool. We can also get box seats at the Jaguars games. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it's... Orange also kind of screwed themselves. It's not even... I'm not yeah. trying to be Vince McMahon here. <laughs> I'm not saying Brett screwed Brett. But, like, you also book these people to the moon. Yeah. And they get, like, they get, like, this big head. Like, oh, my God, look, we're so over in America. And we... And they also push themselves, too. Let's not forget, yeah. like, BTE, like, is a propelling point for them to shoot themselves to the stratosphere. Like more people got eyes on them because they're doing their own thing. And and I, honestly, they were bigger than most Japanese wrestlers in New Japan. You know, like they they were so and, big over there that they were bringing American eyes to New Japan that was never over there. Mm -hmm almost solely on the back of the bullet club you know like it was almost yeah. solely on on the bullet club's back so yeah it, it, it's weird i would love like a like a deep down like i need like a like a not a dark side of ring because nothing horrible has happened and also i'm obsessed with that show now that i finally watched it <laughs> after all these years everyone's like you should watch it. I'm like i know i should watch it. i just don't have the time but like something like that like how concise like they are with their storytelling and documentary style. Like I need like a whole season dedicated to not, not bad shit. Just be like it, the light side of the ring. But like, this is what happened. This is how our race was created. This is a horrible controversy. Then we'll do one dark side of the ring about this horrible person from Philly who likes to prey on little boys. And then we'll skip <laughs> and go to impact and, you know, new Japan and all this stuff. And like, I'm literally just reading as we're talking Rocky Romero. Every, cause everyone's like, What's going on with ROH? What's yeah. happening? Like, what you know? What what's what's going to be the new stuff? Is there a working relationship? Rocky Romero is saying like, hey, there's still a working relationship with um, New Japan. I'm like, is there though? Because it's just you showing up, 
Rocky, and you have a lot of pool within New Japan. Like, you can do whatever the hell you want. So, yeah, you can show up on AEW because they're a forbidden door thing. But, like, yeah, you're showing up on ROH, but, like, is it because you like them? And you be like, hey, Gato, I'm going to go over to ROH for a little bit. Like, yeah, sure, do whatever, man. You're a main man in, in New Japan. You can do whatever you want. Like, what? what is what's that factor what's that story behind that because again this could be a good thing it looks horrible right now because everyone's getting released but like what if like 70 percent or 75 percent of the roster comes back yeah and like this new like format and what if they like hey i can do gcw hey let's show the gcw championship maybe not nick gage (laughs) because he's crazy (laughs) but uh, you know hell why not have him show up already he could probably wrestle for real he seems like he actually wrestled. Um, have him just show up on ROH, right? And have him show up in AEW and have him show up in Impact. Why not? Like, let's everyone just work together. Yeah. It, it's it's easy to say when we're not big ROH people, right? When we're not yeah. like <laughs> part of their, their staff and yeah. be like, yeah, why are you guys so angry? Just do whatever. And like, no yeah. one got slapped in the face there or <laughs> vice versa. Like, man, we screwed up. We should have done that. Um, I, I think too. Uh, well, honestly, they're going to have a, a big problem trying to come back from this. I, I just—that's my worry. I and again, people can blame it on AEW, and and I know I just blamed it on NXT, but MLW is already passing it. Like it already was prior to this happening. You felt MLW has momentum as a lower tier alternative. Um, NWA had momentum. Uh, Jim Jim Cornette killed that. And and it's, it's so funny how that died flat because that was a huge thing. Like I was watching it and remember seeing Twitter was all, you know, now clearly I'm following a lot of wrestling people and stuff too, but like, it was pretty big when it first started on there. And, and with yeah. good reason, there was names, like I said, Ricky Starks. I remember just looking at him like, this dude's going to be a star. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, there's also the Cornette thing happens at that time. And then was it Dave Lagana? You know, yeah. all the stuff with him and that female wrestler happens yeah. and speaking out movement within uh, all of wrestling happens. And I mean, there's another thing right there, right? That was a huge hit to ROH. Yeah, I, I honestly truly believe ROH and, and AEW were working toward a working relationship. And because of speaking out and Marty Scroll being a piece of shit. Yeah. That backpedal and not and not, I don't even think that like Tony Khan and everyone that maybe they mended a relationship that we don't know. And maybe ROH is just being like, hey, it's COVID. Let's be uber cautious, even more so than like AEW, even more so than Impact and WWE. All Let's right. be even more cautious than they are physically with everything and social distancing and all regulations and masking, all of that. Maybe that didn't work out that way, you know? Yeah. That could that, that could honestly be a possibility because we knew Marty Scroll being promoted to head booker of ROH and not knowing his shitty past. You're like, oh, he's going to show up in AEW. Like, we give it a couple months, maybe a year. He'll be, yeah. and honestly, I think he was supposed to. Yeah, yeah. I think I think, so. I think maybe Brody wasn't supposed to be the exalted <laughs> one. I think Morty Scroll yeah. was supposed to be the exalted one, and then you know he's a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess just recently. You got MLW. I feel like GCW is yeah. becoming more, you know, where where people want people want to be like, oh, what's this? Uh, Matt Cardona is there. What what's this? You know, um, they're the alternative. They're they're the purely yeah. that alternative. And and it it only pushes ROH further down. And and it sucks yeah. because they they have the name brand. And um, I in, in a weird way, if I said ROH to a casual fan, I don't know how many would be like, oh, it's Ring of Honor. Yeah. Um, what I would probably have to say is that's where CM Punk and Daniel Bryan used to wrestle. Yeah. And then so like, oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think I remember hearing about that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it sucks. It sucks because 
in the wrestling world, it is it it and the American wrestling, at least right now, should be four. It should be it should be number four. It should be sitting there with those names in American wrestling. Yeah. And um name wise it is. <laughs> And that's yeah. the funny thing. I still look at ROH, even right now to this day, I look at ROH as number four. And yet, if you were to make me watch wrestling, um, I don't know which I would put on first, WWE or ROH. And I don't want to watch WWE. <laughs> and I just don't know which one I would watch first. I would watch MLW before either one of them. It would be AEW, probably MLW, then maybe parts of Impact. And and then maybe that, even try NWA again if it's still on something. <laughs> like that's and that's the crazy thing, right? And you know what? There's another thing too. You got to think of with ML MLW's rise, right? Dark Side of the Ring surprisingly is is a catalyst for this, right? Because Vice mm-hmm. is like, oh man, we're getting a lot of numbers with wrestling stuff with wrestling content. Right. They do a whole episode of the Von Erichs, right? The whole Von Eric tragedy. Funny enough, I literally just started season three, so. I just got done the Devon Derry tragedy. Did not even know how sad. I knew it was sad. I didn't even know it was that level of sad. But who's a big stable in MLW? Devon Eriks. So if you're an old school wrestling fan, like old school old school, you know these old names, these family names, the the Anawahi, the Fatus, you know, the uh, the Snookas, the things yeah. like that. And then you see Devon Eriks, you're like, wait, what is this company? They got Von Erichs, like for real. Uh, these are not just names. They're not like this random David Von Erich. No, no, no. They're like the next generation of Von Erichs wrestling. Oh, you have a Fatu from this the Anoahi family. Yeah, we have one of those, like legit. And it's not even just on name alone. Like these people have proved themselves. And then you see this Alex Hammerstone. You see they have the best part of Lucha Underground now, right? Like all the crap that happened in Lucha Underground, they're starting to build up like a, a – like a, a faction within MLW that's like yeah. Lucha Underground stuff with the history of Lucha Underground. Like all it was like, oh, here, this is all the good stuff we did over there. Don't talk about anything else. <laughs> we don't talk about Joey Ryan. We don't talk about all any of that stuff. But like you have that you have MLW is definitely one to watch out, but ROH yeah. still has that name that, and that that recognition. And I, yeah. I feel like they're about to they're about to break into this next generation, like bringing the new like the pure championship back. COVID obviously did not help. COVID has screwed up so much. Not even just like, personal lives <laughs> and hard, you know, horrible because people are dying and all this stuff. But like, it's so many businesses are like trying to adapt, and it's it's weird to see. It, it's still weird to me to see like, and we just went to dynamite. But like going to Dynamite, going to seeing WWE events, I'm like, man, that's a lot of people. <laughs> that's a lot of people. I think that's probably why I'm most impressed that MLW is like where it yeah. is right now. Because yeah. and they're more sports oriented as well, like you yeah. mentioned before. Like they have that, like that kind of they have war games, right? In their own yeah. version of war games. They have all this stuff and they and they they have a lot of what ROH is known for. And now they have a cable channel, you know. But that's like I'm 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 running down the roster right now, and it's just it is a difference. Just, like I said, Alex Hammerstone looks it's like stuck. a future it's champion. Stuck. Yeah, uh, I, Jacob Fatu. Like I said, I mean, if if you, if I brought somebody who doesn't watch wrestling or hasn't watched wrestling in years, they they call him Umaga. I mean, they just would. Yeah, uh, Look, they call they. They call them fighters. They even call them wrestlers. Like yeah. that's another thing. You know what I mean? You, you have you have um, La Park, which I don't think I, I know. There's like a couple different La Parkas. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know exactly yeah. which one he, he is. I, I think technically he's L A Park. He's yeah. like uh, cousin or or yeah. I was just saying. Know, I I realized one time I watched Triple uh, A yeah. and they they tried to explain the whole thing and it was in Spanish and I was trying to figure it all out. But um, I know there's like eight billion of them now. There's it's like Jerry. There's like a yeah Tajiri. I mean, even a guy like uh, Davy Richards. Yeah, like he came out of retirement. Who who mm. I'm I'm going to I guess roll this in compared to ROH. Uh, Davy Richards has that same um, hardcore fan. I've watched him a lot of places that maybe a Jay Lethal does. Yeah, you know what I mean. He has that same. So then you had the Von Erichs. Like he said, "There's um I mean I'm looking at two guys right here. Never even seen them." 
don't even know what they look like. And on the pictures alone, I'm looking at King Muerte- Muertes and Mads Kruger. Oh, yeah. Who both look like beasts. And I don't, they could be midgets for all I know. I have no idea, but they look like stars when you're just looking at the pictures and yeah. purely just looking down. TJP, I mean, he's, he's a yeah. guy that people Alex Shelley would know. Alex Shelley, Enzo. Yeah. I mean, Enzo yeah. was a, but I mean, I, I know, regardless yeah. of your feelings, Enzo was the reason why 205 Live yeah. was what yeah, it was fair. at the time it, because yeah. people, People enjoy him for whatever reason. Yeah. People enjoy him. Hey, you uh, go down further, dude. You got Homicide, Savio Vega. Yeah. As a as a Puerto Rican guy watching WWE in the nineties, I was like, oh my god, this guy is like me. Was it, was <laughs> Savio it, um, Vega. Wasn't King Mo? Wasn't he a UFC guy? Yeah, yeah, he legit was. Yeah. yeah. So Rivera yeah. was Rivera from the fifty one fifty uh, stable in MLW. He was he was uh, he's Danny okay. Lim, like right. So okay. he showed up. In uh, New Japan and and AEW the past year, Matt Cross, that dude has like if you're a hardcore wrestling fan, you've heard of him. Yeah, um, and and honestly, the one guy that when I watched a couple episodes, Alex Kane, um, he has yeah. a very um, they call him the suplex something. I, I was laughing when I was watching the one episode because they call him they don't call him the suplex machine, but they call him something like that. Like he he's one of those yeah. guys. He just comes out and does a bunch of suplexes. He has a very taller Taz look to him the way they're kind of building him. I'm assuming he has some type of wrestling background because they, they they're pushing him, but like he Friend looks impressive. Show, Blue mini. Yeah. Of the show, you know, I didn't even know he was on the roster. This is the, yeah. the first time yeah. I seen it. And, and I already know this Tom Lawler was not even on there anymore. So he was a guy I was going to talk about, yeah. but like, I, I think he literally just, and it wasn't yeah. like a bad thing. Like literally his contract's done and he's also New Japan strong champion. So he's like, oh, I'm going to focus over here more than anything. But like, but that's like, that's real world appeal, right? To yeah, Tom Lawler, like they're, legit they're, UFC champion. They're about half the size of ROH's roster. When I'm looking yeah. at this and you, you have a gun, bunch of cruiserweight looking guys, which again, for a casual fan, what do you want to watch? You want to watch big guys be each other, and you want to watch small guys flip over each other. Mm-hmm. And it looks like they have a nice mix where you're not you're not pushing a guy. I, I don't know who any of these guys are. Any of the cruiserweights are. Uh, is Zenchi? I mean, he he's not sitting there with the world title. Yeah. I, I'm I'm assuming he's never going to compete for the world title, and that's fine. You have your guys that are going after the world titles, and you have guys that are on their to show off for people kind of thing. Um, but from top to bottom, it looks like a little bit more legitimate roster. It just does. And it's, and it's weird, right? And and yeah. they, they don't, neither one of them has the huge name value where somebody who wants to see CM Punk or John Cena or Roman Reigns or something like that, they, neither one of them has that. But it weirdly just just off of looking at pictures, I don't even have to watch wrestling. Looking off pictures, I'm more interested in the MLW roster than I am in the ROH. Again, how crazy would it be if you if you're like let's say a a 40 year old to 50 year old wrestling fan, and you were like, I'm sick of WWE's bullshit, and maybe you start hearing about like New Japan stuff, right? Because you had that itch. You start watching that. You get the itch. You start watching AEW now. Maybe you watch NXT before it became 2.0. And then you're like, what's this MLW thing? And then you see that name alone, the Von Erics. Yeah. Like, we're from the Northeast, and still the Von Erich name carries so much weight in the wrestling world. And seeing that, like, the only living Von Erich, Kevin, is on here. Like, he'll show up every once in a while. <laughs> and his son's wrestle for this company like they chose right. this company brian pillman chose that company the heart dynasty was in there before you know like and it's not like it was like a bad breakup or anything like they were like oh we just went our separate ways now there's new people that could get shown off in mlw but like it these things carry names and like history carry names like there's a reason that like when the rock was coming up everyone was like oh who's this, this rocky my he's like son of chief by chief peter Myrie and the son of rocky johnson it was like if you're an old fan you're like oh wait i just watched them let me see what this kid got and he's got to come out with a pineapple hair and it'd be weird <laughs> and then finally turn heel and you're like oh there it is that's what um i guess with, with roh and uh, 
the Briscoes have no relation to any Briscoes, right? That's just their no, no. It nice happens to I and, think, that, and that's I guess that's the names. biggest. Th- oh, is that <laughs> they're? I think I just found this out recently because I I forget why I was looking this up. I think their last names are Pew, uh, P U G. Oh, I was looking up GCW stuff because I was watching the Nick Gage, um, the Nick Gage episode of uh, Dark Side of the Ring. And I was okay. like, oh, who's, like, who's on their roster? And I was like, oh, they're champs. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, wait, Nick Pugh. Like, and but, Matt Pugh. I'm like, who the fuck is that? I mean, honestly, and it, again, I hate that I'm doing this because I felt like I did this the one episode where I just felt like I was shitting on WWE. It's a sad thing to have in ROH. There are good people there. There are good wrestlers yeah. there. Um, I'm not blaming the wrestlers by any means necessary for any of this. This is not me saying, hey, if they were better... Um, a lot of them are excellent wrestlers. They are. Yeah. I they just, come from great training backgrounds. Like, But, like, you're, I want to say your biggest draws from a casual fan would be the Briscoes, if you've been to any type of indie shows and stuff mm-hmm. like that. The Briscoes is probably the biggest draw. Your next draw might be Angelina Love. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it just might be. And, and, and I mean, to be fair, it's again, no they knock- were starting to build that women's roster. Yeah, so. and it's not. And, and it's clear. I mean, it's clear that um, that they have been. Um, and maybe that's some MLD will, MLW will be able to poach off of because I noticed they don't have, they have a whole some lot. women. Yeah. But like, I, yeah, I think that was something they were just starting when I watched one of the episodes. They were just mm-hmm. opening their. They were calling it like a featherweight division or something i don't know i mean i was looking um, up today gcw used to have a women's championship it's vacated or it's been retired since deanna peraza dropped in like 2015 or whatever so why not bring that back you know yeah but again i i love some of the workers on here i've watched them at many shows like yeah. i said silas young i love I, he's, he's never going to be a champion in that sense um but I would love to see him in an AEW role where he's yeah. the he's the guy losing to the up and coming guy on a dark, you yeah. know, and that's kind of his role there. And I feel like he's that he's a good veteran type to bring in. I I'm pretty sure when I used to watch him, I'm pretty sure he's one of those guys that wrestles older than he is. I think, right? I mean, now like, he's like probably older. older. <laughs> I think he's. I think he just looks older, but I think he wrestles an older style as well. Too. Yeah. So like, you you have that that comes with it. Like he has that more bruiser kind of like. Like I said, yeah, he'd be. Yeah, he's, 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 he's forty two, which is yeah. not um not old at all. Yeah, it's not old at all. But when I first seen him, which is probably a good you know six seven years ago, he looked old. Um, and he's in his mid thirties at the time, so. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. And I think the bottom line w- with this whole episode is is RH needs to survive, right? And we, I mean, obviously we have to talk about because it it's the big. I think it's the biggest wrestling story going on. You know, right. losing that pillar, I, I think is important, and I think for a lot of wrestling fans, we see it as a fourth pillar. And yeah. And again, they're they're like this phoenix that keep dying and resurrecting, and 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 not necessarily dying. Like again, it's like, oh hey, we're still on TV, you know, but and we're still doing our thing and stuff like that. It's not like they were like, oh, not like this feels like a death, and hopefully yeah. in April it's truly a rebirth, right? But like they keep having these, I don't want to say setbacks. It's just like stuff happens in the wrestling world, <laughs> and people choose yeah. sides, and people go to different companies, and. And things like that. And ROH has been able to showcase so many awesome talent throughout the years. I think it's important, especially seeing how young their roster is and seeing how, like, an LSG, uh, you know, a Brian Johnson, stuff like that. Like, okay, these guys are getting, like, focused now on here and they're getting talent and they're just doing the matches and that's how they learn. And then you see them show up on AEW or something like that. And, like, that's cool, but. I don't. I don't think. I think a lot of people see some. I think some people there's there's fans who see ROH as like a stepping stone, and yeah. that may or may not be true. But it's also a showcase, right? Right. Like that pure championship is special, and I think it's one of the most special things in wrestling because it was, hey, let's do this really, really, really old school 
style of match. You can't touch a rope. You can't jump off of it. Stuff like that. And now let's let's not base all our move sets like like early nineteen ninety WCW where everything was like that for some stupid reason. Like there's special matches or a special night where you just that's the whole night of matches, right? You get that, and you get people who wrestle out of their comfort zone and do this more mat technician style and stuff like that. Right. And then you get like it has so much history behind those championships, like. Those belts mean something. Those belts have a lineage. With ROH, we wouldn't have the modern WWE roster. We wouldn't, and I'm talking about like Raw and SmackDown. We wouldn't have like all this stuff. And there's no, I would almost be okay if ROH went away if Evolve was still a thing. And Evolve's not a thing. Right. MLW is coming up, and that's one to definitely watch. But they also have like a clear focus on what they want to do. And there needs to be this fourth brand, this fourth yeah. company that is big enough to hold a like a decent sized roster, but not bloat it. So like if yeah. Evolve was still around, I'd be like, oh cool, the whole roster can go to Evolve and they can right. thrive. And they have Gabe Sabolski who has his lineage in Philly and with ECW and all this stuff. But now they don't because WWE owns all of that library and stuff. Right. And I don't want them. I don't want any of these guys to go to WWE unless they want to go to WWE. You know, I don't want anyone to get lost in the shuffle. And that's the scary thing about companies like this closing. I mean, commentators. I mean, you have Ian Rockaberry, uh, Rick Abani. Sorry, it's messing up his last name. You know, like he's awesome on the mic. And you have Brian Zane from Wrestling Regret, who's like started to cut his teeth in commentary, like on a national stage. You know. Right. Like it, it's just sad to see this happen, and it's worrisome when they're like, "Hey, we'll come back in April. It'll be brand new and better than." Yeah, ever. I was like, "I hope so for I, your sake and the wrestling world's sake." I mean, I again, I, I guess I'm I'm not holding my breath. I guess is what I'm saying. I I, I agree with you. What I'd love for them to come out, and again, I I can only compare it to this because it was the last time, other than AEW, because that was just a different beast, is the last time that I was like, ooh, something new, and I stayed with it, was when NWA started the YouTube show. Um, Because they're like, all right, it's going to be old style broadcasting. We're going to have it in a little thing, you know, like we're going to be doing it that way. And then you had the little, um, uh, was it Austin Idol, like promos and stuff. And you're like, wait, is this real? Like, you know, you just watch it, but it's just like like, super old school. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was cool the way they did it. And I, I felt like they, they hit something that could have been a home run. Yeah. Um, and I feel like ROH, they have that opportunity here to take a step back, get away for a little bit. Yeah. And even if you don't bring the same roster back, bring in a roster, like you said, just bring in some roster, whether it's new or not, and almost treat it like it's new. Don't try to continue anything. Don't try the, the, the chain. I would even say championships stripped, whatever, whatever, but treat it like it's new. Yeah. Teach the fans who are watching, and, and this should whole, wholeheartedly be on YouTube. I mean, they have this should start on YouTube anyway. Yeah. You should come out, have your episodes, teach the fans why casual fans need to be excited for this to come back. Yeah. You need to, to to show us what ROH was and what it can be. And I feel like that's the only way they really can make this work on their own without being any type of, like we talked about being like, a, I, I compare it to, what was that Jeff Jarrett thing he was trying to do? Global, Global Force Wrestling. Global Force Wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Or but Global he, Force Championship or some shit. Because like that. yeah. that's what, but that's what that was supposed to be. It was it almost supposed to be like a traveling circus that went and got the best from some of the other places. And it was supposed to make all of wrestling one. And that was the, his idea was to make all of independent wrestling. We don't need to sign your guys. We just want to borrow them. Um, if that's not the way ROH is going, which I think is hard for ROH to do because, like you said, with the whole, the pure, the championship and all that stuff. They they have the the wrestling where you, I think uh, 
isn't there one where you can't even go to the outside or it's only five seconds? I don't know. I know they have like a certain rules where you can't do. I think it's a things. pure championship. Yeah. Yeah. You only I, touch the rope three times. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's something. So even and if I, you touch it to do a move, that counts as one of your three. Yeah. You can't and, use it as a rope break. But now. like what, what they need to do is they need to treat everybody like it's the first time they've watched. Yeah. And, and, and that's because I know that there's something about it, but I don't even know. And I'm somebody who has watched ring of honor and I'm still yeah. not a hundred percent sure. I know you need to treat us all like we're watching for the first time and tell us why we should care. And if they can do that successfully, they can build back into it. Cause like yeah. you said, the name deserves to be there. I impact name doesn't deserve to be there to me. TNA deserves to be there more than impact. I yeah. understand why they're not TNA. I get why they want to get away from it. Um, but like that ROH deserves to be there more than TNA more than I, impact. I agree. I mean, there again, there's no impact in TNA roster without what ROH built up. Yeah, and then that you know that random split because horrible people were in charge over there, and they're like, "Hey, TNA is like, you can make guaranteed money over here and be with us, or you can be over there. Whatever, we're not gonna be angry, but you gotta pick one or the other. We ain't gonna have a working relationship with them anymore." No. Nah. So, I, I want to. I, I would love to come back to this like in March, right? And see, because I would love to do that. Like, I would love to see like if they if they build up their YouTube page. And in the next coming months, like after December, like January, February, March, be like, this is the best of ROH throughout the years. Like the first generation of ROH where you have your Samoa Joes, your El Geneticos, your, you know, your Kevin Steens, your Samoa Joes. I mentioned them again twice. Uh, you know, Danielson and, and Daniels and Kazarian and all that stuff. Like show that off. Tyler Black, show that off. Because they have like, they'll put like free matches on there. Right. You know, or show Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero wrestled in Norwich. Do that. Like, show all that stuff. Show CM Punk. Or put those DVDs that they have, like, the best of this person, the best of this. Just make them available on the YouTube page. And, like, eat that loss. Eat that money. And just be like, hey, listen, we also have a streaming service. You can watch these on, too. But in the next coming months, we're going to show you why we matter as a company. And then that March, start introducing what ROH is going to be right. Yeah. Tease in February, be like, listen, in March, we're going to have some stories. We're going to tell you what, you know, what is the status of the pure championship? What is the status of the women's championship? These were maybe having brackets. We'll start announcing every week who's going to be the women's wrestlers for those brackets. And if, and if you guys need, you know, people for voiceover work, <laughs> we're available. You know, we're local guys. <laughs> we could definitely be like, hey, this is the history behind the pure championship. I can do yes. that. Look, they call me one take Carlos for a reason. Okay. <laughs> no one calls me that. I can try it though. <laughs> and we, every time I mess up, just take like $2 away from my paycheck. Don't worry about it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Though. I, I, I hope you realize now each week, I'm going to say which your boys rest pass and one take Carlos. Cause that's, one take Carlos, that's yeah. a new thing now. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Now I, I, it's a, it is an opportunity. It, you know, it, it's weird because uh, I don't have faith. I don't have faith, but I'm also not an ROH fan. Um, other than the fact that I want it to survive for nostalgia reasons. Um, I think from a business eh. standpoint, it needs to as well. Like I, I really, I truly believe like it needs to survive. So like, but I, I, I think I, and, and I guess that's where my point was. If this doesn't, it's probably just going to push MLW up a little bit more. Uh, and I think that's where they're falling into some weird plane right now is mm -hmm. that GCW's gotten attention. Um, MLW's getting attention. Um, they very easily can be the feeder systems for these other wrestling, you know, mm -hmm. uh, other organizations to where ROH, it has to figure out what it is. And, and maybe that, maybe that's what, maybe that's what's been the problem. You, you're getting passed by the feeders, the low ends and you've never built up enough to be a high end and you're you're falling somewhere in that new japan model which works for them but i wouldn't say it necessarily works as in the u.s uh when you have all this alternative in the u.s 
You just, yeah. there's too much. You're not, you, I know a, a lot of people like to say, and, and this is where the whole AEW criticisms come in at, where they say that they knock them down, is that ROH was prime to compete with WWE. ROH was never prime to compete with WWE. It just never was. It's never, to their fans, they might have felt that way. There, there are probably fans out there that think New Japan is ready to compete with WWE today. There's probably people that think that Impact, that if they really try, they can compete, and they can't. AW can't. AW has done something that we thought would never be possible, and they took a sliver. Sliver. Mm-hmm. AW's become the best wrestling company. Yeah. And they still probably can't do a whole hell of a lot to take away a fraction, you know, more than a fraction of WWE. Yeah, and, and, and nothing's it, ever going to compete at that level. It just yeah. isn't. It, it, it's they're they're such a monster on their own, WWE, you know. Like yeah. I, I mean I personally enjoy watching AEW more. I personally love the action that we get in the ring. I I personally love the storylines more. Uh, I kind of like, you know, I do like that they don't treat us like idiots for the most part and other stuff. And I mean, again, we talked, this is like, you know, my first episode with you guys officially, like there's good things and bad things with both companies and things like that. But like, they are a juggernaut on their own. Like literally you can turn on Peacock, like the streaming service Peacock, which also like has one of the most anticipated horror movies in the past couple of years and Halloween kills. Let's say someone gets the streaming service for that. Right. And they, they have to pay the premium price. They have to pay the $5 a month at least. And for that one month, they're like, oh, I got done Halloween Kills. Yo, what's this WWE Network? Oh, <laughs> they got old WCW matches? Oh, when we start watching WCW. Like, that's the power WWE has. Yeah. That they I- team up with, like, Comcast to do this. Yeah. And, like, people are like, oh, well, while I'm here watching this random movie from the comfort of my home, I could also watch all this bunch of stuff I used to watch back in the day. And like, oh, wait, who's the Seth Rollins guy? Who's this? Who's that? You know what I mean? Like, the, there, there that's is- their appeal. Yeah, I, there's a reason why websites, when they cover sports, put WWE and not wrestling down. There's just yeah. a reason for it. ESPN. It just, yeah. You go on ESPN for the long time, the tab isn't pro wrestling, it's WWE. Um, and they're like, here's an article yeah. about AEW. Like, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, and that's, uh, I, I can compare it, I guess, one way, and maybe this is the best way to look at it. Um, I just got back from Disney World. We just went, we went to Disney Universal, right? Um, now, I would say without kids, there are a lot of adults out there that would say, why the hell would you go to Disney World when you my can go to Universal, kids. right? Yep, that's why why go to Disney World when you can go to Universal? I don't kiddies. think there's a yeah. single person out there in the world that's going to tell me that Universal Studios is bigger than Disney World. It's yep. not. People go to Universal on an extension of their trip to Disney world. Not many people go to Florida just for universal. You're doing both or just Disney. Disney's a powerhouse. I don't care if they cater to you. You still have to go. It's the same thing. Disney world, WWE, they're the same thing. WWE will be a powerhouse. Why? For nostalgia reasons for, because they feel like you have to, because when you hear wrestling, you hear WWE. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, in a weird, weird way, and I feel like some stuff got taken away from Universal. Don't want to get too much into it. I enjoy Disney World. I don't enjoy Animal I'm, Kingdom. I enjoy Disney World. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, but like, my, so come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the very first ride the kids ever went on was Flight's oh, Passage. Good. Very first ride. And God, Summer cried the whole time. Um, <laughs> we knew... we. I mean, she's, she just turned seven. Yeah. She's not used to any of those rides. She was scared of everything. And the very first ride we put on is Flight's Passage. I mean, we, we knew you it was coming. dirt. Yeah, <laughs> water's getting shot in your face. Like, I will what? say, for as, much, dirt? <laughs> yeah, for as much as she was freaked out by that, she did eventually go on Space Mountain, which I was surprised. We thought there would be no way in hell we would get her on that. So, uh, But, like, it's that same thought process that, like, there are people out there that say Disney sucks. Well, guess what? Universal will close well before Disney will. Yep. This will happen. And it's the same thing. Who's going to close first? AEW WWE. I mean, unless Vince McMahon completely sells the company, which I think a lot of people hope happens, which is why everybody tries to get all these conspiracy theories of why or, it's going to happen. Or his brain is finally like, you know what? 
uh hunter you get the company like, oh okay. then even then, <laughs> i mean uh, and that that's the only way that wwe goes away honestly i see it maybe eventually going away when it's not vince because yeah. i could see a guy like hunter eventually getting sick of it at an old age not wanting to do it until he's 90 you know yeah. or, um, or he and, finally gets the reins and he's like i'm <laughs> done though like i'm like <laughs> yeah hey, i don't want to be doing this shit why did you last so long why are you 120 <laughs> when you die it's not fair but like i if you were to ask me who would close first impact or roh i would say impact because uh, roh a, I, yeah roh i felt like was always going to stay at a lower level that it wouldn't shoot itself in the foot which i think is the most surprising thing about all this is How'd you shoot yourself in the foot? <laughs> yeah. What that you that and try to expand. I don't to wrap around the whole episode. Like yeah. that is the that yeah. is the crazy thing, right? Like what happened yeah. that you guys are doing this this four month long hiatus? Like what yeah. happened? And like no one's talking, and like no one knows. And I feel like they kind of communicated poorly with some things, or like the fact that some wrestlers didn't know, you know, until yeah. later, but like it, it, it's what happened like i need to know like I, it, not just as a wrestling fan and and as you know podcasters and stuff like that like i just need to know because like i i, I should have it's you know it's like if you have like multiple kids it's like i didn't have i didn't think i had to worry about you <laughs> why, why do you have the drug addiction i didn't have to worry yeah. about you. you had to worry your brother's always getting arrested yeah. and almost dying why are you i didn't have to worry about you yeah now i gotta worry about both of y'all <laughs> like yeah i know I, the other one's sober now yeah, they said the the day that they said we're going to compete with AEW WWE, then you'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa! Mm -hmm. You just got to get like on Impact level first. You aren't even there yet. Yeah. But like that's not that's not even what happened, and that that is the strangest thing of all of this. If you told me Impact was going under right now, I'd be totally like, okay, it. I get mm -hmm. it. They tried to go through the pandemic. They started bringing in guys. They're probably paying them higher contracts to keep them away from AEW. I get that, but it's not like ROH's roster is sitting there with guys that they're paying millions of dollars to stay away from AEW. Oh. Like, I, uh, and the other thing too, you know, they they could have been petty when they announced like, hey, I, you know, we're gonna let everyone out of their contract and stuff. Like, you really know we're letting everyone out of their contract at the end of the year, minus a, like few talent that has to stay till March, like because that's how long their contracts are. Yeah, and uh, you guys can take bookings immediately. The fact that they just let them take bookings out of me, yeah. I was like, all right, well, like, there's a lot of good faith there, and so what is wrong? Like, where yeah. was this crack? Like, where and, this? that's what I'm saying. In March, I would love to come revisit this yeah. and be like, holy uh, and, shit, and, they and if, they really are on track to do it. And then let's yeah. see what it is in June. And that's, I guess, if if there is a whole game plan of rebooting or or, or you know whatever the game plan is. Mm -hmm. They said they they went about it poorly. <laughs> they they yeah. went that that was not that sounds like a company who is going under. Yeah, from yeah, from the announcement sounds like a company that we're done in December. So to say yeah. we're going to come back in April with a new, it's like, huh? What? It would have been like like NXT. three months that yeah are those three months going to do much? Yeah, help you. I just thought I don't I don't get it. It's like NXT 2.0. If they completely mm -hmm. chopped off anybody who was on the roster prior to that episode, Chapa yeah. gone, Gargano gone, these are all gone. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry, what are you doing? Because then you'd be like, wait, what? Why'd they just fire the whole roster? That don't make any sense. That's what this is. It's like, what? Yeah, we're gonna come back, but we're letting you all go. What? Huh? And yeah, that that's the worry thing, right? And then that's that's when my like conspiracy theory brain and you hear that we talked earlier in the show about like the Sinclair broadcasting thing. Like, is it you guys? Because I feel like, like the bookers and everything wouldn't be like, let's have this giant women's tournament. Let's bring in Maria Ca Canales to be like, Hey, no, for real, this is not K this is not kayfabe. You run this women's division, like help us. Let's build this up together. Let's rebuild this. I feel like you wouldn't put all this work in to then be like randomly a week or two later after the women's champion is announced be like yeah we're gonna let everyone out of their contracts <laughs> like something higher than what happened 
is going on and then it's just yeah. the trickle down effect to be like our age be like hey look at all this good stuff we're doing aren't we doing it good mom and dad was like oh we're getting divorced wait what <laughs> what happened i just won valid victorian <laughs> i guess i i would i would say that if i know a lot of people were there was the rumor about like the libraries being for sale and stuff like that and they said no 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 it's not um i guess if i were to hope that they sold that they sold to like an MLW where they could yeah. almost fall under the ROH umbrella, but continue to run things the way they're running it. Cause no, no knock on the MLW name, but ring of honor brings a different level to it. So if you can give me the MLW product under the ring of honor name, um, maybe I'd be interested. Yeah. Uh, and maybe they could team up with somebody else. Right. Yeah. Now, like, PWG just relaunched, you know, after Man. like I think like a year or two of hiatus. Like, what if there's something that we're like, hey, y'all got the West Coast, we got the East Coast, let's work together. Yeah. And then randomly you see Malachi Black on ROH, that'd be awesome. <laughs> you yeah, know what I, mean? like, I just don't I don't want to see um I don't want to see AW by them. Um no, I I, I, I don't want to see anything with WWE. Like, I don't want to see them, I don't want to see them selling to them. I would hope that somebody who wants to use that to elevate where they are, even impact. I don't want to see impact uh, unless, unless impact is going to completely become ROH. And now they have the, the, um, you know, the, 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 the TV yeah. and stuff like that, but like they just become like, uh, I would prefer an impact to become an ROH, honestly, because impact is nothing. It's, it's a nothing. It's, that's why they have to keep revisiting TNA because impact means nothing to nobody. Um, I mean, Scott just, Demore is smart, right? And he and he's yeah. he's tried with the help of Don Callis before. You know, Don Callis just recently left. They they've done a lot of goodwill to get back to a place where like Impact fans are like, see, see, we are good. But then it's not really. Yeah, it's but not. like if if <laughs> it's not if you get all the smartest people right that work for ROH under Impact, and Impact's like, hey, y'all do your thing. We'll do ours. Let's like it's like shaking hands and like all right, together we are stronger. We'll take the best parts of us and the best part of you and just make like combine it. Maybe that could work out something yeah. like that and yeah. rebrand. Like that's it. No more impact. You are yeah. ROH. Yeah. yeah, all those we're, titles we're, are transferred over. Yeah. Like, you do unification are, stuff. You do all that stuff. Exactly. We're yeah. we're Ring of Honor now. Impact. I, I still don't get it because that was the name the only, of the, the TV only impact, show. Yeah, I don't the only impact it. belt I would keep would be the knockouts championship because that has more prestige than the women's championship that just got. But then, but then you make it the ROH knockout knockouts championship. championship. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's all. You just you go <laughs> under that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, honestly, that that probably would be the best thing is to to merge the two because a lot of your impact tna history actually meshes well with a lot of the roh history so yeah you, you you have a lot there um that would that would probably be good they just have to get rid of the goofy shit um impact would have to just uh, maybe not all of it I, I understand why they have it but there's too much it's too much it, it's goofier than wwe a lot it, of it is right it just is i just don't, so, I, don't, I don't get it's it it's still I don't, so shocking to me that like cardona and Chelsea Green are in GCW and they're like uber heels, like the most heelish of heels, and they're doing so well there. And then you get the impact, and we're like, Yeah, it's just Cardona and Green. Like, okay, like you guys should be like stratosphere, like the stuff that you're doing, GCW should impact what you guys are no, no pun intended, are doing an impact. Like, you guys should be like the Uber heels here too. Like I mean, they've been they've been pushing Moose now for twenty seven years. It feels like, right? <laughs> yeah, you're still waiting again. Yeah, that, but like that, that promo so, was good, though. I will say that. But like he, <laughs> you know, it, he spent a lot of his time holding a championship that didn't exist mm -hmm. and calling himself a champion. Like they 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 pushed him. It it had a weird WWE Braun Strowman feel, where you're like, do it. Okay, it went away. All right, now do it. That went yeah. away. Now do it, and then now he comes and now you're like, all right, dude, dude go away, yeah. <laughs> go away. You can't keep saying that you're the cha next champion. You've been doing it for four years. You're, yeah, you're, 
go back in line and come back around because now you're, you've that's just been here too long. Too, right? Like, the, I don't know if you knew this, but like for all intents and purposes, for the near future and not like in permanent future, nothing's bad, but like Impact and AEW are done. Like the contract is done for like their for right. door thing. It's not like a bad thing. Like like Christian dropping the belt recently to Josh Alexander was the end. They're like, all right, we're done for right now. And the door's still open for them to work together. It's just like literally like this period is over for a little right. bit. So like ROH is open, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? And if they if they got that video library, you know, why not? You could technically, I this is random, but I don't know if you know this, but like in, Impact on their, because uh, I watch their highlights every once in a while because they have the inspiration, my favorite tag team. <laughs> uh, but they have, the, like, they're, they won the knack, Knockouts Tag Team Championships over there. Um, I went on their YouTube and was looking. There's the subscription plan on YouTube because you can do YouTube subscriptions. Um, hmm. Maybe my channel one day, you never know. Uh, maybe our channel one day. You never know. <laughs> um, but I think it's like five dollars a month or whatever, and you get whatever their streaming services. And not to mention they're on Twitch. Like there's a twenty four seven channel that they right. have on Twitch, and they show episodes of their show live on Twitch. So if you don't even have cable, <laughs> and, yeah. and you know how to use Twitch, it's so easy to just log in on Twitch and be like, "Hey, I can watch this for free." Yeah, I again, I don't follow Impact because I think their product's awful. But I will say that I feel like they are in tune that way. And that's where I think if you can give me ROH's wrestling and seriousness and, and, and because ROH is more serious than AEW when it comes to wrestling because it's pure yeah. wrestling, you're going to hit a different target. And, and that's the thing. You can, you can have three brands. WWE is about the kids and, and the acting. And, and that's that's what WWE is, and it's what's always going to be. Mm. It's just never going to be about the wrestling, not solely. AEW has a little bit of everything for you. Mm -hmm. It has wrestling, but it's a lot of the high flying flips. You know, your your biggest guy is, you know, Lance Archer's landing on his head. Um, you know, you got <laughs> that kind of stuff happening. So now you bring in ROH, um, slash Impact, but hopefully just ROH. And now it's about the wrestling. It's what NWA wanted to be on YouTube. And you're going to hit a different audience, but you have to stay in that lane, stay in your lane, because I think there's enough people out there that want to watch that. Um, and if you put a guy like Josh Alexander in an ROH ring, you know, I mean, he, he, he embodies what that is. I mean, you put him in an ROH and as yeah. their champion, and he embodies it. Yeah. Um, it. It would it would be a nice thing. I just I worry again. Sc Scott Demore. How long has he been running Impact? Uh, um, it's he, I think he's he picked it up right after Jarrett lost it in Corgan in yeah. uh, Billy Corgan. Right when like that, it was really bad again. Right. Like, oh, they're going under and, like for the millionth time, and they did it. And I think this is when Callis started working in wrestling again. He started doing New Japan commentating and all. All right. Because of Impact, like, kind of working with New Japan or, like, they have a history. Mm. Uh, I think Callis and Demore picked up then. So, uh, okay. Well, six years ago, like, all right. That's even yeah. longer than I thought. Yeah. Um, so, like, I just worry that they're going to make some in. good decisions. Like, again, yeah. there, there are stuff that happens on Impact. They're like, Oh, okay. You know, like Josh Alexander being champion for two minutes. That was a smart two minutes. <laughs> but and like, I, but again, Moose is, he's a guy that if I told you he's the champion, you'd see him mm -hmm. be like, okay, because he looks like a champion. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, but like, it, it's that whole, I don't trust TNA or Impact to make good decisions. Um, I would expect them to bring in ROH. Put yeah, ROH like under governor, their yeah. umbrella. Let and you'd them have an, make the decisions. Yeah, you'd have an ROH champion, a TNA champion, and an Impact champion all battling for each other. And then, you know, they would almost because what wasn't their heavyweight championship the NWA um, when they first started? 
Way when they when. first started, when Jared, yeah, Jared worked um, the deal out there for like, the longest time until and was like, now nah, we're taking this back. I could see them doing a weird thing where like they call them the ROH titles, but they're still impact. And like, I just, I just, yeah, it, I mean, it's happened. It, it makes my head before. Hurt. Why not? Right. It makes my Why head do hurt. It again? I would, I would like to think that they know that there's not a rich impact history because there's not, there's not, there's not a rich TNA history. There's not. Uh, TNA's history is Hulk Hogan burying it. Uh, Jeff Hardy being drunk in the ring, being pinned by Sting. Yeah, that's that's God TNA's. Ever, yeah. That's TNA's legacy. Okay. And, and look, I mean, yeah. what was was Kurt Angle killing it in Impact in TNA? Yes. Was he high as a kite? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he was. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 there, the, there's the bad side. <laughs> the main event mafia was one of the coolest things that I've ever oh, seen yeah. in wrestling. Like so, like they they Aces had and for like spots. The two minutes. But again, you can yeah. you can target that new audience, and I feel like mm-hmm. Ring of Honor can do that. Um, they just they need help, <laughs> and I I'm I'm fearful that if they reboot themselves, that we're going to be right back here in a couple of years. Yeah, it's it's the wrestling world too, right? So like how many times does a reboot like work? Yeah, and I, I think I what's our biggest touch point, right? And, and my, you know what I'm thinking when I think like the worst idea for a reboot is the Millionaires Club versus the New Blood in <laughs> WCW when Russo is like everyone gets their title strip. Like why? <laughs> but like ROH has given us that predetermined in our head that they're going to be rebooting again. So why care? Like that's and I think that's the biggest issue. Like you said, reboot already has a bad taste in your mouth but the roh has done it enough where you're like all right you you've kind of come out natural weak. almost right you know like yeah. <laughs> all right there's mass exodus but yeah. like oh we'll build up those champions again but like you, you feel like never they've come a full out, stop <laughs> they've come out weaker each time uh, yeah. I, I feel like like their 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 momentum has been stopped sooner uh, every single time and it's i don't know something big needs to happen We'll see. I, and I thought there was like some problems when uh, I've mentioned in previous episodes. I the one time I went to ROH was one of the best wrestling events I ever went to. It was uh, Worlds Collide, the first tour with New Japan and ROH. That was amazing. Those nights were amazing. <laughs> and right. then they did Worlds Collide again, and it was still like pretty big roster. And then they did it one more time. It was a little less. And then New <laughs> Japan's like, you know what? Uh, you guys in ROH, we can sell out Madison Square Garden together. They did that. And then it was like, New Japan's like, we can sell out Madison Square Garden on our own. I was like, all right, yeah. let's do that. And then, hey, we're coming over to the States. Well, we can just do our own thing. Yeah. Oh, hey, we can establish our own dojo and, and TV show in the States. Yeah, we could just do that again, too. Listen, we could just do our own thing. Because like, but, ROH I mean, is in that, like, like oh hey no 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 we can help you we'll do all this stuff let's let's let us do yeah. it it's like well, why you don't have anybody yeah yeah we 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 realized that we sold these things out because of the new japan guys it wasn't because of yours and yeah they're you're not and, they're not bringing enough to the table mm-hmm. where where is will osprey <laughs> new japan strong in america and mlw that's the crazy going back full Man. circle he's showing up in mlw not our wage Oh yeah, I'll get to see him on Saturday. I will, yeah, I will be there. there. I I don't know who I'm taking now because Jer backed out, but I'll be there on Saturday. How did he back out? <laughs> he uh, he did He's not realize enigma. the date. Yeah, oh. uh, he, he didn't realize the date. So, but I will hopefully. I'd offer my there. services because I actually uh, I I can't go to the wedding now on Saturday, yeah. but that's because there's a hand foot and mouth thing that just happened in my household. So, <laughs> I'm. Pretty much quarantined. <laughs> so I was like, damn it. I can't well, do anything. I'll bring it um a tablet with me and you can I'll just yeah, sit yeah. in the seat. Yeah. I paid for this <laughs> ticket, so I'm just gonna use this tablet. Are you recording? No, he's literally just watching. Um actually I offered that for the wedding. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna tell Walt and be like, Hey man, bring your phone. Can you just like turn your phone on and I'll sit next to you? You could do both. You could be at the wedding and MLW, yeah. it would be crazy. <laughs> Je- yeah, Jeff's just crying. He's like, I'm so happy to be married. He's just be like, Yes, yes. <laughs> Why is he so excited? I just, little Osprey's on the other screen. Um, well, I'm a little surprised. This is going to be our longest episode with me and you. 
and no, it was about ROH. I'm, I'm a little surprised. Um, I guess before we wrap up completely, yep. I did want to at least mention um, the John Moxley yeah. situation. Yeah. Um, just very quick. Don't want to make this a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was... I, I don't know if it was cool that Tony Khan posted it the way he did. I, I don't know. I'm assuming they, they let him. I know he said with their wishes and stuff. Yeah. Um, hopefully... I, I think- Everything I think it's okay because Renee Renee did um, yeah. she did just put a tweet out before we started yeah. and saying thank you to everyone. I mean, like, I mean, clearly, clearly, this didn't just become an issue. Um, again, I think it it holds a testament to what AEW can hold secret because you feel like if somebody was dealing with this in WWE, we would have heard about it to make you a storyline out of it. Yeah, not even just WWE it backs backstage news you know what i mean mm-hmm. i didn't see any reports that moxley had a drinking problem you know what no, i mean like never. it's not like you've seen anything where like i've oh, heard man. he's like a partier like from roman yeah. and, and, and and i Seth and who and knows like... who knows how serious it is because you know some it could just be that he had a kid and he feels like he can't control it who knows we don't know the full story don't want to speculate on it trust me that's one of the most um, sobering things as you know as a father like yeah you start re- you reevaluate everything when you see those little eyes you're like what <laughs> Am I a uh, fuck up? Yeah. I might be. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, I think it was cool that it, you know, it, it got announced without mm-hmm. being leaked out. It kind of has a weird Brody Lee. I know it's different, but um, hopefully for his sake, it was nice that, you know, he did it himself. Hopefully he gets better. I know yeah. a lot of people that have alcohol problems. Um, I know people that don't want to get better and mm-hmm. they, um, they know it's ruining their lives and don't want to get better. So yeah. I, I, uh, I respect somebody who goes through with it for whatever reason. Again, yeah, hopefully I, I, we don't ever know the full story because I feel like stuff like that, we don't need to know as much no, as everybody I, thinks. The fact everybody that you thinks help. you need to know because he's on TV and they, that he somehow yeah. owes you an explanation. I hope it never comes out. I mm-hmm. hope this is the extent of what we hear and hopefully, you know, he gets it taken care of and yeah, you know, they'll be back soon. That's uh, what I'm hoping. Yeah. Hope yeah. for speedy recovery, you know, take all the time you need. Um, I, I, I uh, give kudos to AEW for handling the way they are. Um, I, th- I think, I think, I feel like Tony wouldn't have made, at least from his history and like knowing how they are it, from the outside, at least like, I don't think he would have made the direct announcement unless he, he definitely got approval. Like right. not like I could see, I could see Moxley being like, Hey, listen, man, I'm doing this. I don't, you know, I don't feel right in my head. You know, I'm like all he's cause honestly, he's been showing up on GCW live. I don't know if you've seen those highlights. <laughs> he's beat the shit. Yeah. And he's got a newborn and that promo like legit hit for me. <laughs> like when he was in Philly, he was like, I yeah. got a newborn. And he's yelling. I'm like, I think he's being serious on this one. <laughs> like, yeah. And it, it's rough. And for him to recognize that he needs to work on himself, kudos. And yeah. for him to reach out, and to have a, a supportive workplace that'd be like, you take all the time you need and for them to drop it. Like this is another, another like check mark for me that like, I, I love AEW because we've seen it with Brody. They were quiet and they let the family deal with it the way they needed to. And then were vocal when they needed to be. Um, now we have confirmation when Hangman came back. You know, he came back in our battle royal that we saw. But the next week he mentioned, he's like, I'm doing this for my baby girl. Like my, my baby yeah. who's home is like, OK, so you were written off TV. Yeah. So you yeah. can be a, a dad. And they let you. And they dropped a whole big storyline to be like, yeah. no, yeah, he, just be your dad. We'll pick this back up later. Yeah, Don't worry he, about he that. Even, he even mentioned about how, like, you know, at the hottest point of his career that he walked away. Yeah. Um, and they let him. And yeah. they brought him back to the same point where he was like there's no repercussions for being a family man there's no repercussions yeah. for taking care of yourself but in this I, I in mean, this company and rumor has it and uh, who knows but because it was like a slow heel turn on Nasley a little bit that he was going to win this tournament and go against hangman kind of thing yeah i, I, I mean that throws that a wrench in the plans and, and i don't know if you watched aw tonight uh, miro actually took his place yeah i saw um, that and yeah. then he beat orange cassidy of course so yeah. 
as um, you should. <laughs> yeah, and so I don't know if we're going to end up with Hangman Miro on this, which I mean, Miro is a hell of a mm-hmm. heel to throw right in there, and and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's great. But like they roll with the punches a little bit. Um, and, Better. And they're, yeah. they're not. Yeah, they're not going to hide it. I mean, Dark Order still, you know, is is love Brody Lee. That's why they're not heels. I, and I don't see them becoming heels again. I just don't know. It would have to I take something like extraordinary. Yeah, it's going it, to, it's like such a, a tribute Rotunda, to Brody. You know? yeah. yeah. But it's such a tribute to Brody. I feel like if, if, if Wynda came, it would have to become something different. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. so, uh, but it, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I really do like that. The company, it, I, you know, I, I, I'm sure there's a fan out there like this is BS, like this shouldn't happen, whatever. But like, there's such an old school mentality with so much stuff. And especially in a day and age where everyone's like worried about their mental health and taking care of themselves, uh, you know, whether it be with COVID, whether it be with like literally like mental health, like, you know, speaking from experience with depression and anxiety, like being not yeah. okay. It's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to seek help if you yeah. need help. And it seems like they are such a caring company in that sense to be like, Hey man, you need to take time. Cool. Hey man, you're about to have a kid. You want to take time? No, I think you should take time. Don't worry about. It. And like, I think wrestlers in the past would be like, "No, nah, I got to work through this." I mean, yeah. randomly enough, I've seen the built the um, Brian uh, Pillman thing. Right? Hmm. He gets hurt in this this horrible accident, and it's like, "No, I got to push through. I got to keep doing it." And he keeps hurting himself worse and worse, and his in ring style completely changes because he won't stop because he feels like I'm going to lose my spot if I don't stop. That's a WWE problem. That's a WWF problem. That's an old yeah. school problem. You know, Tony yeah. Khan coming from our generation who watch and seen all this stuff and see all the bad shit that happens to people who keep pushing themselves. It's like, yo, don't push yourself. Take the time you yeah. need. We'll still be here. Yeah. Plus, if, you know. if, if this was a long term heel turn to get him back in total picture, you can almost guarantee when he comes back. Yeah. he'll be heel turning and, and right back in the title picture. So it, you you know it's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a weird it's a weird world we live in now with with all this. That the fact that you know, like you said, you don't you don't just keep it down. Uh, we both have had a minor conversation about it. We both dealt with shit. I know I did, especially yeah. during COVID. Um, and it, it's weird because I hate Ben Simmons for many reasons. I don't hate him for the mental health problems. And I no. feel like yeah. a lot of that, I don't think he's making it up. Um, not to get too far into Ben Simmons. He had a lot of shit happen where his sister basically blamed their half brother of molesting her when she was a child in the mm-hmm. middle of last season and never talked about it. The dude had a lot of family problems come up last year that would have wrecked a lot of people at the age yeah. of like 23, 24 and, and you're talking about a half brother that's basically his assistant that he's spending every day with, and it's his full sister. Like it's like, like that can ruin somebody's life. Yeah. Um, and you don't know how to deal with it. Uh, none of us know how to deal with it. Honestly, we none of us mm. really know how to deal with it. So uh, to have a wrestler where we're all like, that's great, get help. Yeah. You know, as opposed to. I don't want to see Danny well, die anymore. Well, you we're know? paying. Like, yeah, well, we're paying you thirty million dollars. Come back, win a championship, get better on your own time. You know what I mean? It's it's weird to think of it in sports. That like circling around that, to that Kurt Angle thing. Uh, TNA picks up Kurt Angle at the worst possible time in his <laughs> life, and he pushes through with perks and muscle muscle relaxer. And yeah, does he have banger matches? That's awesome. Should he have? No, no, he shouldn't have. He should have took the time. You know, and it, yeah. it's a it's a definitely a new generation, and and he recognized it. Renee recognized it, and Tony gave him a working environment to be like, yeah, take the time, and that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So kudos yeah. to AEW. They keep yeah. doing more good things, not just wrestling <laughs> and yeah. Wednesday Night Dynamite, like actual yeah. good things in the world. Yeah. So I I just want to acknowledge. That. I want to make sure yeah. we got that while it was. Uh, but um, I guess on that note, since we're creeping up on two hours now, um, any last words on ROH? I, mean, I guess it could be last words on ROH, but you got any last uh, comments yeah. on it? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I just to circle back, man, I hope, I hope this reboot is what they need. I hope that they go out with a banger in December. And I hope they kind of, that the idea that you mentioned, like just kind of, reintroduced everyone to ROH through their YouTube channel and maybe social media. 
And maybe in April, you know, it's a different story. Maybe in April, June, that time frame, like those couple months, the first couple months of this new reboot, maybe it's a completely story. Maybe we're completely wrong. I would love to be wrong in this situation. But, you know, I ho- hope for the best. Um, again, I know it sounds like, you know, we're trying to like, you know, get clout or whatever. But like, for real, we have a platform. Anybody locally or anybody from ROH would love to talk. If you're watching, please feel free to hit us up. We absolutely have a platform that you're more than welcome to speak. We can go through questions beforehand or whatever you're not comfortable with. We're not going to jump the gun and be like, so how much are they paying you? You know what I mean? Like all that stuff. We'll, we're more than welcome to you guys. What's, so. the, what's the low down? What, what yeah, did you yeah. hear? <laughs> Is that um, Rob Feinstein, right? Hey, that piece of shit again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, like, you know, we, we have a platform. You, you, any, you know, active wrestlers more than welcome to come by and we can you have the floor for an hour or two whatever you want to get it out good or bad yeah yeah since since uh i guess the people can see me see that was i i had to do something real quick sorry Um, (laughs) (laughs) as we're finishing up um but yeah i I, yeah it would be it would be nice uh you said we got we got mecca johnson following us you know who knows maybe we'll listen he he enjoyed the the fuck Ben Simmons chant too. Yeah, that's true. So, that's true. but yeah, no, nah, I, I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful mm-hmm. because of the name. Um, but I feel like now there's so many alternatives that I'm not worried about the workers. Um, yeah. but I would like to name to live on and hopefully instead of impact, cause that is hot garbage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. again no 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 nothing to do with the wrestlers it's no. a lot of the the i, I don't know yeah. the weird like they're they're i don't know who they're targeting i do no. i don't i i have not been able to figure that out i can i can I, tell I, you what every wrestling company is targeting impact i i i don't know i i don't know people either, who I, it I'm legit children. happy about all the women wrestlers that are champions. Like Mickey <laughs> yeah. James, knockout champion, awesome. Yeah. The inspiration back together after WWE screwed them up. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys are finally back together. I'm glad you guys are champion. I'm glad you guys are in a company that <laughs> you can you can watch on TV because they are yeah. amazing. And WWE screwed the pooch on both of them. Uh, uh, well, there you go. That's um my my final words on ROH is. Please take over Impact because they're awful. Okay, yeah, well. you buy them out, not the other way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so on that note, um, no oh god, um, <laughs> sorry. No, it's fine. Um, on that note, I guess that just ended here, right? There's no point in dragging this on um so we don't really have a next episode hopefully it won't be too long uh yeah we did promise that top 25 or 10 yeah, or whatever well I yeah I, I, the, the beauty we'll of that is that. It, well, the beauty of that is i i i said it so early because it's all season long for the nba yeah. so we might have to throw that out there a couple more times uh but we'll eventually get to that and we will move on to whatever but it won't be this long because i was just in disney that's what took so long so on that note we will uh we'll see when we see it